Hi, everybody. This is Darian Wigfall, Director of Operations for Farfetched. I'm here with Peter Shankman. Say what's up, Pete. What's up, Pete? <laughs> uh, how you doing today, man? I'm, uh, I'm doing okay. It's Friday. It's the start of the weekend. Yeah. I should be driving to Peoria for a gig right now, but I'm not. <laughs> really? Okay. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, I got moved to September, fortunately. But, uh, Okay. Well, at least it got postponed and not canceled. That's know. the key, man. That's good. So, yeah. So, I'm doing these artist talks with uh, different artists around the scene, just kind of asking folks how they responded with COVID-19. And hopefully we're coming to the end of that. But, yeah, how, how you responded to the stay-at-home orders and did you, like, continue creating? Did it stop you at all? Did you slow down a little bit? Just kind of like, what was your general response? Sure, I think it's it's all the above. So my situation, it, it's not unique. There are a couple others like me in St. Louis, but I'm I'm living both worlds. I'm an agent, and I'm I'm in the in a band itself that should have played ten times already by now. Mm. That, that isn't unfortunately, which is definitely uh, sucked. It's it's it sucked. Um, yeah. But doing that, it's it's interesting because my job during the day, Fat Pockets, one band that I do play in repping the shirt um right. i represent well over a dozen other bands and had plenty of other types of things booked in st louis during this period i had a conference in vegas where i had a bunch of bands booked for and different things all around the country and all of that's gone so during the day my job has been damage control um but at night it's been an opportunity unfortunately i'm not able to make music freely with my friends anymore together but it's mm. given me a chance to kind of focus on all the things that I never have time to do. Like I love to okay. cook and I've cooked all but like six dinners in two months. <laughs> so it's nice. been like, it's, it's been good. I've been eating good. I've been putting on weight. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sitting around. Uh, but I think my initial response, it's kind of funny. I remember we had a show March 13th and I think March 15th was when we got the 50 person gathering yeah. order. And then it was like, order. March. Yep. 16 was the Monday where everything started shutting down. We closed the contemporary productions office and started mm. working from home. And I have since that day. But I remember the week before from my recollection was the first time that coronavirus and COVID-19 was really discussed um, at the band level. Like that was the first time I remember that Friday gig on the 13th, we started talking like, Hey, this is what's up. You know, people are talking about, whatever we're going to fight for this we're going to keep these deposits we're going to do what we can but then yeah. march 16th everything went out the door yeah um so you know everything's changed so much since then I, it's a blur that it's been like two months almost now but right yeah. away i know i felt differently than i do now mm -hmm. and it's a roller coaster i think i've seen other musicians going through it um where like right when this all hit it was like okay we lost our gigs we're not going to make any money for a little bit but now we can shed we can practice we can do this and i was gung-ho right. with that for like two weeks mm -hmm. and then i think myself and a lot of other people hit that wall of pressure where it's like okay you're home you want to create mm -hmm. but you can't go play a show so you don't have that outlet anymore so it's like what am i yeah. creating for and then that's real and then it's like you're living in a pandemic and you start feeling that. Mm. And then mm -hmm. you start seeing the people who are doing a good job of creating. And then you're like, well, man, I'm not. And then you get hard on yourself. And <laughs> it's, it, it's like all over the place. Yes. Like I know Jahi, you know, had a similar situation. He interviewed that plays in Fat Pocket with his beat making. Yeah, yeah. It's like he dived way into it. And then it's like, we got to pull back a little because mm -hmm. this is a new world. Right. It's in burnout. So yeah, tell the people um, a little bit about a little bit more about what you do with Fat Pocket, and then I think uh, you named the uh, your your agency company too. But talk about that and uh, some of the work that you've been doing over the past few years. Sure. So I grew up in music. I, I don't know. Are you from St. Louis originally? Yeah, I grew up in Creek Corps. Awesome. Course. So you're familiar with what my family's done for sure. Okay. Uh, my father was and is the president of Contemporary Productions, which is the company that I work for mm -hmm. as an agent. And that was back in, from basically 1968 to the late 90s, was the concert promoter in town. 
built in a river port, programmed the okay. pageant, all sorts of stuff like that. Yeah. And then uh, and then he sold that, which ended up being spun off in two different companies until it became what is now Live Nation. Reopened okay. the company in the early 2000s, got the name back and everything amicably. And Contemporary became more of a boutique event entertainment agency, mm-hmm. which has progressed to be doing big events, big meetings. Like I said, I we had a corporate meeting in Vegas that has been pushed oh, back, and I had a bunch of acts booked for that, different things like that. Um, and I'm an agent that represents bands like Fat Pocket, and we have many other awesome acts, a few too many to, to mention. Okay. I guess one of the <laughs> artists that's the most public is Charles Glenn, who was the anthem singer for the blues up until we won the okay. Stanley Cup. Yeah, yeah. Um, so like I manage his band and other things along with some other agents. So that's my day job. It's mostly private bookings for for weddings, corporate events. It's really the event world. We do festivals. Mm-hmm. We're not so much of a club agency, but we do book for some casinos and hotels, things like that. So that's my day job, which is now postponing hundreds of events right. and working out other days <laughs> that are not thrilled with the situation. Um, so that's that. Uh, I went to college for jazz piano performance. Okay. And I moved back okay. home after that about almost nine years ago. Um, mm-hmm. So I started working right away as an agent at Contemporary, but then I joined Fat Pocket six years ago and kind of on playing keys, which was fun because I'd never played in that context before. Like I had really? been a jazz musician that only played jazz and I kind of had you know, blinders on. Television. that sort yeah. of a thing but then all of a sudden i'm like playing p-funk and bruno mars and <laughs> yeah <laughs> you, you, you know and, and the whole gamut of music people like to dance to um mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. from joining that and then working to contemporaries able to kind of help bring fat pocket to what it is today with everybody else's contributions and so that's a real fun band to play in and this was our wedding season so it's Ah, yeah. <laughs> DJ, I totally feel that that pain. I actually didn't have the only wedding that I had confirmed coming into this year was in October. So like I didn't have anything canceled. But yeah, I've had a bunch of DJ gigs cancel. And like, yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, it's it sucks. You might, uh, do you know DJ Chris Brown or Micro? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah I grew up with DJ Micro. Company with them uh, called Skin Society DJs. And it's like, this was okay. the first season. <laughs> yeah. Oh, damn. Yeah, those are my boys. I grew up with Micro. I've known him since I was like 19 or 20. And Chris <laughs> Brown, I met him along the way. He, he, he is a my, smart dude. Yeah, both of them. Yeah. yeah. But um, so uh, what are some of the things that you miss uh, not being able to like, move around just as a person you know i i think i'm good at being a homebody yeah even though i'm normally not uh it's mm-hmm. weird not being out two nights a week and working five days a week in an office mm-hmm. but i i miss i miss hanging out with my friends my bandmates are my friends my coworkers are my friends yeah. um and it's just tough because it makes like all the interactions a little bit different now than they normally would be right. or like you communicate via text so much that like you start misinterpreting each other. <laughs> mm, yeah, just reading into it. <laughs> yeah. You know, you're like, why is this person mad at me? And then you realize, wait a second, they're fine with me. They're going through their own thing right now. Their job's right. been threatened, you know. Right. <laughs> like, this, this is the season of patience and forgiveness. If anybody wrongs me mm-hmm. during this time, I'm giving them a pass. That's mm-hmm. not meant to be an invitation. Yeah, <laughs> right. But, but I understand wrong what Peter. you're going through. <laughs> Sure. But yeah, um, I, miss so, that. I miss shows. I miss being able to make audiences smile. I miss being able to yeah. screw around with my bandmates on stage and clown around and have fun. Because mm-hmm. um, that's one of the nice things about Fat Pocket, specifically as a band, is it's like there's nine of us and we all love to play together. And there's so many badasses in that band on their instruments, but yeah. none of that gets in the way. Mm. Like, none of us are trying to show off to each other or one-up each other. We're trying to, like, all show off together. And when somebody does, we give them their due. Everybody turns their head, you know, acknowledges it. Like, it's fun, even though we're playing music that otherwise we would never want to listen to. Mm, Yeah. Like, I don't think anybody in the band is really a Pitbull fan. But, like, when we play Fireball, (laughs) we're all in. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) 
but like who's so who's doing the arrangements for uh, for that so that's the coolest thing to me about fat pocket is every arrangement is it's spoken but it's unspoken we okay it's everybody is a full-time member of the band it's not like your standard wedding mm -hmm. band thing where maybe it's like you got your six-piece band with the female and the male singer in a rhythm section then you can add a sax or add horns which we mm -hmm. do represent a contemporary and works really well especially because then like that band hits multiple price points, but Fat Pocket mm. is stubborn. We don't use okay. tracks and we are always a nine piece band with the same horn players who are okay. full time and all of them sing back up and sing lead on at least one or two songs. Mm. So, like Jahi's not singing lead the whole night, somebody you interviewed, but he does sing lead on This Is How We Do It and Hot In Here and Ain't Too Proud To Beg. So yeah, I noticed that. Cool that was thing. Cool. But we do rehearse, or we used to rehearse every Tuesday or every other Tuesday night. Okay. Um, there's no sheet music. We don't have anybody at home writing stuff down. We just get together and collaborate. Okay. And I That's think awesome. a lot of the best things we do on a show were just antics that came up because we're kind of loose on stage to a point. Mm -hmm. So that if somebody finds something on stage in the horn section, Jaber, the leader of the band, plays tenor and male vocals, he may... Mm -hmm walk over to the people mid gig and be like do that again and then that becomes the show okay like that's... like like on fireball we do a thing that's just fun because there's the like bringing it bringing it bringing it down section and we're you know everybody's supposed to go down to the floor there's just one gig where we were having fun and the whole band just started doing it so while the guests get down we're on the floor i'm playing keyboard in a side plank playing like a montuno <laughs> pattern up here in my right hand Giant okay trombone like this and it's just these fun antics that become part of our show um which makes it fun for us and the people we're playing for that's real man uh that just makes me think of your jazz background does that help you open up to that sort of improvisation and do other people have similar backgrounds or does do people come from different musical backgrounds in fat pocket or like how does that all work it's all different backgrounds. A couple of the yeah. guys went through the jazz program at Lindenwood back in the early 2000s. Okay. Um, but, I mean, we, we've got everything. We've got people that came up through the church system. We've got people that came up through, mm -hmm. through formal education. We have some people that had some formal education that left it. Yeah. It's, it's all a mix. Um, and we don't really communicate through sheet music or even really through music theory so much. Because everybody is a good ear. Mm. I think that's what kind of takes us. Like, we never spell out, like, hey, there's hits on the and of one and the E of three. Like, we're not doing that. Like, okay. we're just, yeah, we're just playing. <laughs> nice. That's good. I think, it, yeah, that's, that's what keeps it so loose. You're able to change on a dime, especially when people have that ear and you like to play together and you're like listening for what people are doing because it's like, ooh, I like that. Let's do more of that. Yeah. Um, it's just a really great environment. So, uh, it's awesome to hear. Yeah, it's it's huh. fun. It's it's the only way that I mean, because like again, we're playing songs that we wouldn't play mm -hmm. at private okay. events, and you know, I get a high from playing for people that are enjoying what I'm playing, no matter what that is. Like to me, that is its own reward. There's there's artistry, and then there's this whole thing, and this mm. thing to me is worth it. It's a different yeah. type of high. I'm able to separate the two. I know some people can never. Mm -hmm bridge that gap or their pride or whatever um yeah. being able to take a badass approach to songs that nobody wants to play it makes it fun for everybody yeah that's interesting i never and i never thought about it as like separate things because like one thing does produce the other but like i guess you you could continue to be creative and be an artist and and hone your artistry without ever like publishing it, you know, putting it sure. out in the public, and and then that is a separate thing. You don't have to perform for people or whatever. Huh. Yeah, That's it's it's an interesting thing. It's like if you're gonna DJ a wedding, are you just gonna pull up iTunes and play Uptown Funk, or are you gonna come right. up with some mashups and some other dope material to drop inside of that? Right, you know, remixes it's like, and like it's the same sort old of thing. school. Yeah, give the people what they want while also taking something for yourself right showing showing uh what you can do yeah yeah and how you do it yeah personally awesome so what are some of the things that you're doing to keep your spirit alive while we're having to stay at home right now uh my wife and i still love each other so that's great 
That's good. So that's really good. We still enjoy each other's yeah. company. We don't have kids, which is making this. Okay, I was going to ask. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which is making this a lot better. Uh, we were supposed to go to Italy in July. I'm not sure how that's going to shake out. Okay. But yeah. uh, no, I'm I'm cooking a lot. I'm I'm doing some other music projects. This has given me a chance to start practicing jazz again. Uh, mm -hmm. One of my buddies in town who I used to actually play jazz gigs with was, is a bass player. And okay. he goes by the name Cristano, and he uh, he oh, makes yeah, beats. Mark. Yeah. yeah, Mark, you know Mark. Yeah, so I've been working with Mark a little bit, doing a couple Zoom sessions where I just play over his stuff. I should have him on here. Yeah, no, he's uh, he's I love Mark to death. Uh, I play music awesome, with awesome. him ever since I moved back home. So it's kind of fun learning because being a jazz musician is not great if you're trying to get into doing that context of music because mm -hmm. I'm a harmony guy. I think of chords with 10 notes on them mm, <laughs> but when you're mm -hmm. doing that he's like p like two notes <laughs> yeah back it off a little bit <laughs> <laughs> i'm like no this is sick f minor 11 and it's like no yeah. no no <laughs> people won't understand <laughs> it's, it's not even that it's just you know that's great if you're just doing piano and a drum beat but if you want to add in layers yeah pulling back yeah which i i, I love it it's a challenge it's it's new to me that's good. Have you played with him at Sophie's Lounge at all? I have not. Okay. It, it's been bad. The one drawback for me being in Fat Pocket is we're mm -hmm. successful. <laughs> yeah. <You're laughs> and playing it's like with... it keeps a full enough calendar that when I'm not gigging, I'm really not going to shows anymore or popping into jam sessions. It's that. it's like I've got a, two full time jobs and it's it's enough. Yeah. Especially with the booking and everything too. Sure. Yeah, it's it, it's it's been a, it's been enough. But I know that whenever I think that all of this starts letting up, I'm gonna try to make that push again because I'm really feeling it now. That's awesome, man. Well, um, I know you spoke a little bit to this, but uh, do you think anything positive will come out of everything that's going on right now? I sure hope so. I think that the the first positive is the second that everybody gets back to doing what they do that everybody's first gig is going to be the best gig of their lives. Like, we talk about that in Fat Pocket, and I'm sure other people are talking about it. It's like, when we finally get together and throw down, <laughs> it's going to be so good. Yeah. But it's also healthy, because, like, everybody's getting away from the material they're used to doing in the mm. context that they're used to it. So That's true. We're, we're, we've been given this opportunity that – you don't even have to be practicing right now. You don't have to be creating right now. But then when this is over and the new normal comes back, it's, you've got fresh ears. It's going to be different. Like, I just know that everything's going to feel different, sound different, hit different mm -hmm. for every musician in the world. It's going to be, it's going to be a beautiful thing. Um, but I don't know. I mean, it's, it's interesting talking back to the agency side of things. Like, we're also an event producer as well, and we're talking about, you know, new ways of using, you know, virtual events and trying to create more of a community of that. It's capabilities we've always had and done, but now we're trying to see how that's going to work. Um, last night, I was on a call with William Morris, which okay. was pretty cool. Wow. Um, it was this town hall that they did talking about virtual streaming. And what's interesting hmm. is they're going through the same issues that I am. Okay. It's like no band. I'm, I'm, I'm going to... I don't want to make any enemies by saying this, but no band that is playing a live stream and you've got different people in different places is a live stream. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> the technology does not exist for me. It does not exist for Bruno Mars. Nobody has it. Mm. So it's been interesting, like talking and hearing because like virtual concerts are becoming a thing, but how do you present a virtual concert? If you can't right. literally have all the musicians, what can you do? Can you pre-record? the backing band and then have the lead singer on a green screen and the lead singers live playing along with the backing band remotely. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting concepts like that, that I think may change the industry, especially if they're saying no concerts till 2021 or 2022. Yeah, for real. Yeah. Cause like, even when things go back to not being at stay at home, like we're still going to have to be careful because I know with the 1918 uh, to 1920 pandemic, it was like they thought it was over and then people went back to normal, basically, and then 
there's a huge new wave. Yeah, my advice is getting... to like not watch the news. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> because nobody knows anything. True. Whether it's 5G or it was a bat, nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, I, I kind of stay away from that stuff. I'm just trying to, yeah, figure out things like you're, what you're talking about is like, how do, how do I do a dual DJ set with my friend who's at his house and yeah. I'm at my house? And like we're streaming through another friend's computer, you know, like right. and he's kind of doing the controls. Uh, and there's there's some softwares out there that like are kind of bordering on that, but yeah, like you said, it's just not. like I saw. There's something called like Jam Kazam, but it's not like professional grade, and you know that yeah. sort of a thing. It's like X Mix or something like that. It's something yeah, like that. But like with DJs, yeah. it's a little bit easier, but because it's like two people, but like syncing up yeah. nine people with nine internet connections, that's not happening. <laughs> oh, no, that's not happening. You know, yeah, I'm just understanding the, the consequences of latency. Exactly. Well, um, yeah, before we get out of here, let people know where they can find uh, the Fat Pocket info and anything else, um, your, your agency booking page and things like that. Sure. Um, shoot, I got a bunch of stuff, but I'll try to limit it. So Fat Pocket's the band that I play with. It's F-A-T, I know I'm backwards, but it's F-A-T-P-O-C-K-E-T, one word. Our okay. website, Instagram, and Facebook are all Fat Pocket Band. So okay. fatpocketband.com or at Fat Pocket Band. And you'll find us. Um, and then Contemporary Productions, if you Google, you'll find it, which is the agency. Okay. Contemporary Productions, right on. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been interesting, but like some cool stuff is still happening. Like last night, like Michael Che, the comedian that does SNL's Weekend Update, mm -hmm. at like 1 a.m. he was doing a live stream just hanging out with Dave Chappelle. So like last night, wow. I spent two hours hanging out with Dave Chappelle. In what other world would I have been able to do that? For real. <laughs> oh, before, also before we go, what's one of the first places you're going to visit uh, when all this is over? Whichever bar that I go to opens up first. Yeah. <laughs> Could be Planner's day. House, Beamiston Cocktail Club. I don't know if you go to a restaurant and let somebody else make me a meal and like put it on my plate For real. <laughs> instead of a cardboard box. <laughs> uh, or I'll, it'll probably, you know, I don't know, I'm lying. It's going to be a gig. It's going to be a gig. Right. I could play a yeah, show somewhere. <laughs> Right on, man. Well, uh, Peter, thank you for joining us today. I appreciate you taking some time to talk to me uh, while we're doing these artist talks during COVID. And uh, yeah, hope to see you on the other side at a show or a bar or something like that. Right. Stay safe, man. You too. Peace.